What is going on guys? Welcome to today's video. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you how to install Rocket Key onto the 47 slash 49 CC engines. Let's get started. On a side note, check out this bad boy. Just got done. Ooh, beautiful. One last side note, I just bought this motor today, guys. This is no pocket bike engine. Serious business right here. And by the way, guys, welcome to part three of the 47cc engine rebuild. I'm just starting out by removing the pull starter. As we move further along into this series, please refrain from getting on me about the order of this series. It's completely random, guys. I'm running a little bit light on time this weekend. That's why we're doing the rocket key install quick. What I mean is we're gonna be doing a full circle crank install on the engine too, so obviously in your guys' eyes, it's not gonna make sense to do this rocket key install, but it's just all separate tutorials, and this is how I have to do it to make it work for my schedule. And I hope you guys enjoyed me taking apart the engine a lot of times for this series. After you get the pull starter off, you're gonna wanna remove the ignition coil to free up some room next to the flywheel. Then for the way I'm doing it, I need to take off the spark plug next. I'm gonna be using a screwdriver to basically jam the piston. This way I can get the flywheel bolt off without the engine trying to turn over. And that's why I'm wrapping the end of the screwdriver with some electrical tape to protect the piston from getting scratched at all. To make this work, I want the piston deep into the engine. Then we're putting the screwdriver into the spark plug hole to create the jam. Once you break it loose, you shouldn't need the screwdriver anymore. You can go ahead and pull it out. Another way to make a jam is sticking the screwdriver in the flywheel teeth, but by doing this you are risking breaking off a tooth. Now assuming you guys don't have a puller tool, we're just going to be using a screwdriver to remove the flywheel by twisting back and forth and kind of sliding it off. This doesn't take much effort. If you are having problems with yours, just squirt a tiny bit of WD in the center of the flywheel there and it should just come off. This is pretty much just pressed on pretty lightly. Alright guys, so now that we got everything off, we're ready to complete the install basically. So when you order your rocket key, this little piece right here is what it is and what you're gonna get in the mail. Here's the stock one. So basically, if we put the stock one in here, that's top dead center for this engine. And what the rocket key does is it either advances your timing, if you're putting the notch to the right, just like that, that's gonna be advancing your timing, which in theory uh, increases your acceleration side. And they say it advances or retards which is going the other way by 10 degrees. So basically, you're gonna have to make that decision. Do you wanna advance it for more acceleration, you know, probably drag racing or, you know, more takeoff stuff, or do you wanna go on the top end and retard the timing? I'm gonna be retarding it. They also can say that the stock key actually just works the best for the engine, so I'm new to this. I haven't did a rocket key install before, so I'm just gonna be kind of playing around with it. So I'm gonna be going to the left here, and now we're ready to reinstall the flywheel. Before I do that though, I'm gonna take the key out for a second and do what they recommend, which is wipe off the end of the crankshaft right here and apply a little bit of grease on here with the key in it. So let's go ahead and do that. Shouldn't need much, just gonna go a little bit around the crankshaft here and we should be all set. Like I said, when I actually get the engine in something, I'm gonna be trying the different options, such as turning it to the right for advancing the timing, or even trying it just with the stock key in there, because every engine is different, and I guess you could say for our engine, it's gonna be pretty heavily modified, um, so it's gonna be a little bit uniquer. There's only a couple videos out there that show this key install at all and I've only seen stock pretty much bone stock looking engines with it and a few people have said the stock key works the best but we'll kind of have to see what works for our engine and my setup let me know if you guys have done this install before down in the comment section too now finding the key slot in the flywheel again we want to line that up with our new rocket key so we can begin to install the flywheel back onto the engine then we're back to the screwdriver trick in reverse this time to go ahead and tighten that flywheel down. There's no need to rubber mallet this flywheel on. The screw will go ahead and press it on. Just make sure you're getting that tight enough on there. After that, you'll wanna find the magnetic part on the flywheel to slip a piece of index paper on that magnetic strip there. That way we can get our coil on there and get it as close to the flywheel as possible so it creates maximum performance with this setup. After you get the Ignition coil screwed down again. You can pull that piece of paper out and that will keep it as close to the flywheel as possible 
Finally, you can put the pull starter back onto the engine and get the spark plug back in there too. And then you're done, guys. And I should mention that they recommend checking the tightness of the flywheel bolt after 10 minutes of riding, probably from heat expansion and whatnot, but I would go ahead and take that advice if, if I were you. It's, it's going to be important to keep the flywheel tight on the crankshaft. So I hope everyone enjoyed this rocket key install and I hope it helps some people's performance out too. Let's go over some of the new parts that I got in for the engine now. So again, please don't grill me for the order of this series. Of course, if it wasn't for the how-to videos, I would have installed this performance lightweight flywheel today with that install. But you see, by combining that into this video, there might be someone that just wants to do that flywheel install and it, they might have a little bit more problems finding this video because it's mainly the rocket key install so that's my reasoning behind doing it this way but like I showed you guys earlier I did get the full circle crank in and guys this was only 17 bucks pretty dang cheap for you know a decent uh, decent quality part right here seems nice um, and then yeah I just showed you guys I got the lightweight flywheel which it looks like they just actually milled off the fans um, themselves it looks like it's just the stock one but check out that kind of dinger on this fan right here on the fin I mean that that's kind of uh, nasty looking I might have to send some pictures over to them because I mean you should get a nice quality thing and not big ding it's trying to focus big chunk out of the the fin right there but and then I also got the performance clutch I went ahead and just got the entire clutch set up it, instead of the springs I know that you guys just said you know don't get this just get the the uh, stiffer springs but I went with this because I've never tried it before and this is actually just those bearings from that big bore kit install. Basically after going back and forth with them about that bearing for what seemed like forever I finally just had to send them over the video so that they could visually see that looseness for that big bore kit install that we did but they ended up sending over those couple more bearings. Um, I'm not sure which one I have to go with yet. I haven't had the big bore kit opened up yet, but this full circle crank might need a different bearing entirely because this opening is a lot bigger. Um, I tried out some of those bearings that they sent right over there and they're still completely loose in this thing. So I think that this opening is really bigger. I asked the crank guy about this because this is a 44 millimeter, which that's the big bore kit that we put in there, 44 millimeter. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get the straight answer on that. Maybe you guys have experience with this and uh, know about the full circle crank, what bearing I'll need for that. But yeah, I'm trying to figure that out, just waiting for Monday basically to get the straight answer on that one. And then that electric start that everyone's been asking about, uh, wanting to see the how-to on it, I did get another straight answer on that. We need to use a 12 volt for this and that one wire that comes off of it is just for the positive. Positive. And then I guess it just grounds out by being on the engine and the frame. So after hearing that info, I'm feeling hopeful about that electric start working out again. Um, but of course I'll need a turn switch ignition and then a button probably to actually uh, fire the electric start to make it work with the 12 volt battery. As far as the carb install, I haven't been thinking about that too much. Um, we'll see when that comes around. That'll probably be somewhat a part of this reed install. Um, see, something like this is so small that uh, we'll see if I end up combining that. I really hate to do it though. So maybe for that reed install, I'll end up doing the install and then showing you guys some riding footage or we'll go on a cruise or something. I'll think of something since that'll probably be a pretty uh, simple and shorter install for this engine. Then lastly, I think for right now, the pipe, that will require not much of an install. Um, there's a little bit to show you guys how to set up the pipe. It comes a little bit pieced out. But of course, with that, the engine run stand needs to get done so we can actually hear the pipe because that's the biggest part of putting that pipe on there. But I am still figuring that out, but I'm enjoying just working with this clean engine right now with no gas or nothing in it, honestly. So I'm kind of holding off on the engine run stand um, probably just for a couple weeks yet. Um, and again, I wanted to show you guys how I set that up. Um, we'll see if I can actually get some kind of dyno set up with it. I was telling you guys that would be awesome to do. So we'll see, feeling hopeful about, you know, at least getting the engine run stand done so we can try that out. But I think that's enough Gavin at the end for discussion wise and not much has changed. Um, I am working on a basically $10 pocket bike build video that you guys are probably gonna like. That'll be a kind of a nice little banger kind of drop 
video for you guys to check out how we do it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this install though. Stay tuned for the rest of the series of this engine build. I'm really enjoying myself doing it. But again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.